But yeah, I hope everybody's okay. Um, you may notice a little bit of difference in me. I've had the old uh, lockdown haircut. Um, got some clippers. I didn't have a mirror in front of me because my lad decided to do it for me. And I didn't realise that he was on using the quite severe settings. So much so, my parrot, who doesn't like change, won't come anywhere near me. Uh, every time I go up to the cage, he goes to the other side of it, looking at me thinking, who's that? I don't know who that is. He wants nothing to do with me. Right, without further ado, let's get back to the video. I'm going to teach you now how I use Adobe Lightroom to process my images. Hope you enjoy it. Right, let's move right into this. As you can see, you can see my cursor okay there. Um, on the top right hand side, you've got library, develop, map, book, slideshow, print and web. The ones I only use and the ones that uh, I only use for wildlife photography are the library and the develop module. So these are called modules. Now, when you're in the library module, you come across to the left hand side and you can see all your files, the different files that's over here. Right, so when you're going to import something, you're going to always be in the library mode. That's always going to be the case. Now, what you do is you put you put your memory card into the memory card reader and when you're in the library module this window pops up and what it's done there it's found my eos digital that's my card and it gives you a few different options down here now that's the card so that's where you click now as you can see I've only taken a few shots, just just a few shots, just for an example. And you'll see in the middle here, it's got copy as DNG, it's got copy, move and add. I'm not going to go through all these other, I'm just going to tell you what I use for wildlife photography processing. So I use copy, so you see EOS Digital at an arrow, you go copy and then what it's going to do is going to copy to an external hard drive now it's a good habit to get into from day one is to plug in an external hard drive name it what you've done i've named it raw files mark because i'm going to be importing raw files because i shoot everything in raw so i've called that name. now what you would do is you look down there and you could find I've got a couple more of different uh, external hard drives and you could click on that and then it's change it like if I click on that it's got put it to pass three that's one of my passport um, external drives but I use raw file more so therefore it's not going to go into the computer's memory right on this side once I've gone into that, on this side, well, I've been in the library mode and it's come to this window, yeah, I don't use any of these. I simply don't use any of these. So once you're in that situation, all of those are ticked automatically. I've gone from EOS Digital, copy to raw file mark, that's the external hard drive. So therefore, I'm now going to import that. And what happens is, if you look over to the left hand side, you see the progress bar. And that's the images being imported. And you can see them coming through into this window. Bearing in mind, I'm still in the library mode. So that's doing that itself. So you leave that alone until you've gone with the process bar right to the end and that progress bar has basically disappeared if you watch that uh, i'm not going to touch it it's gone okay so that progress bar. so that means we're all we're all basically done and dusted so what i always do at this stage always i'm at the top i might have 100 200 1000 images so i always go down 
and make sure that that everything's been imported into uh, that hard drive into Lightroom. Okay, so right, so we know they're all there. I'm going to go now to the develop module and we're going to see some information here. Now you have to select this information from the drop down bars just to give you, you have a choice of what information you want there. Now you're going to get the, the, the file number and the fact that it's CR2 basically means that's a raw image, but it's going to give me all the data of what I, how I've taken the shot. So at one five hundredth of a second at f5.6 at ISO 800. I've used the 400 millimeter right lens, which is the which is the EF 400 millimeter f5.6 USM lens. So it's giving me all that information there, which is really helpful. So I know I'm okay with that shot. Now, the first thing I do is bear in mind this is a, now a raw image. Okay, now I could have been moving, I could have done all sorts. So you've got to check whether or not it's actually sharp and in focus, which you can see that one is. Now, it's not a particularly good pose. So what I would do is I'd go down here to the to the uh, index of all the images down here. And you can see that one's highlighted. I just click on the next one. It's not much better. Let's have a look at him a bit closer. See that one's not bad. Let's have a look at this next one. See a little bit more light on him there. He turned into the light. So let's just see. See that one's nice. Nice shot. Let's just work on this shot. Now, you're in your development module. And on the right hand side, let's take you through this. You've got your histogram. And we spoke about the histogram. And you can see what a mix of a histogram that is. You can see that there's nothing over over to the right or over to the left, so nothing's blown out. So that's a quick look at your histogram on there. Now you've got various tools down the section. You've got the basic, you've got the detail. I'm going to show you, I'll take you through what I use generally. Okay, now let's look at this first. This part here, that is your crop tool that you always use and there's other ones there that I'll come back to in a later video but for now that's the most important one open the basics and as you can see here you can go from color to black and white yeah you see how it's going to go back to the color because I'm going to keep it color okay the profile is Adobe color which is cool automatically Okay, so here you've got white balance as shot. That's how we've shot it in the camera. The temperature is the white balance and the tint is the white balance. Okay, now because it's as shot, I'm going to leave those as they are. Come over to the exposure and hover your cursor over the exposure there. And you can hold it and increase the exposure or decrease the exposure. Or, if you, that's at minus 35, if you want that to return to zero, just tap it twice on the actual writing. Or keep it over and use, which I do a lot, this, is I use my up and down key to do that. So, let's say, let's just go a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I've gone plus 0.20. We're going to need a little bit of contrast. So again, I'm going to put about 30 on there. Now the highlights, you tend to drop the highlights. That's what I tend to do. Shadows, watch the bird now. You see how it brings out more detail. So bring up the shadows, the whites, and this is all you playing around with them really, just to see where you go, because uh, you've got the blacks. I think that's there. This is a new um, thing called the texture, which sort of brings out a different thing. I'm going to leave that at zero at the moment. Clarity, you see the difference. Look, that's minus. 
and that's plus. So a little bit of clarity. The dehaze, we don't need that on this particular one. Vibrancy, again, that, that brings out the colours in a very subtle way. Let's just have a little bit of that, plus 10. And the saturation, that puts a lot of colour in. Look at that, which is just over exit, looks awful. So keep that at zero. And if you want, you can put just, say, five or 10. Now this is a colourful bird, so let's have about plus 10 on that, okay? So now we go down to the detail. Now sharpening, it's it's got to be done when you've been shooting in RAW. If you're shooting in JPEG, you can do some sharpening, but not a lot. But with the sharpening, again, the amount that we use, let's, let's go for around about 70, 75. That's the one I always use as the top one. Now the masking, bring that level. Because what the masking does is it makes sure that you're only sharpening the subject and not the background. So keep that around about level. Luminance is noise reduction on the whole picture. Now in this shot, there is no noise really. If I put a little bit in, you don't need a lot you see what you can happen if you've got a lot of noise in your picture and you put a lot of that on it smooths the bird out and it smooths it out and makes it look awful so be very careful with that just put a little bit in just to make it pop out a little bit okay now so noise i don't touch any of this i don't do the tone curve i don't do effects or anything so that's the basics I'm talking about the basics and what we do then is I come up over to here to the crop tool I clip on that and you've got your rule of thirds there now this one it's good because the way it is it's going to be it is looking to, to into the left of the picture so we're going to be cropping now what you've got to bear in mind is the whole thing is what your camera has produced and that's the megapixels that's the total megapixels. If you take a piece out of that, you're reducing the, the, the pixels in that area when you're cropping it. Okay, So you want to make sure that because you've used a zoom lens, you've got an image that's quite sort of taking up a nice bit of, uh, of the, uh, the space. So what I would do in a situation like this is I would crop it from there to there and you can grab hold of it and you can position it anywhere you want so I would actually crop that probably there and then down in the right hand side you've got the done okay now I don't think that's too bad that's quite a nice shot what we can do is because it's clear we can afford to make a bigger area because it's a nice look at that so uh, what it is now it's a picture that's got a, it's a good file size because I've opened it out a little bit more so it's still got plenty you've got plenty of detail on, on the subject okay the background that's fine there's nothing too aggressive there that's fine on there so that's made an absolutely nice shot so let's say for example now that's it we're happy with that shot okay now what we've got to do is we've got to now export that into a file and this file you choose where it's going to be i basically I, what i do is in my finder in my file i've got all these various ones so i've got wildlife master okay and on my wildlife master i've called them stock photos over the years and i've put various photos as i go along when i think it's got enough um, images in there i then create another one so at the moment i'm on stock photos 48 okay so that's where i want that particular image to be but as you can see there it's actually got 160 items so to be fair 
there's enough in that one. So I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to do a new folder. And I'm going to call that one. Stock photos. 49. Yeah. So now there's no items in there. So what I need to do is I then need to go back to I've come now back to uh, Lightroom. It's called Lightroom Classic, this one is. I'm still in the Develop mo module, and I'm happy with that image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go down to Export. And go on to the Export. And if you can see, if you ever will take you through this, 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 this module, this window, Export to a specific folder. Well, we do, right? And this has gone into a different one. This is, at the moment, was one I was using before. So let's go choose. And add it to my wildlife masters. And we know that it was stock photos 49. So I click on that twice and, and choose that. So as you can see now, it's in my pictures, which I've got a folder called wildlife master. And within that, it's stock photos 49. So that's where it's going to go. Okay. I'm not going to put it into any subfolders or anything like that. This I'm telling you what I do rather than going through everything, you know. So coming down, ignore that, ignore that. File settings, JPEG, SRGB. Quality, 100%. No limit of file size. Resize to fit width and height. Right, this is important. This is in pixels. And if you notice, I've got 5,472 wide by 3,648 pixels. That is the size that my camera produces straight out the, out the back of the camera. So all you need to do is you need to look in your camera, look at your details and find out the exact width and height in pixels and put that there. Because then you've cropped the picture, we've made it smaller, but this will resize it to the original size. And we'll go for a 300 resolution. Yeah, and that's pixels per inch PPI. So bear that in mind. So that's what your camera puts out as the original size image and it's in pixels and the resolution is 300 okay there's not it's just resize to fit width and height and that's that and then we do nothing else on the other so that when i press export that is going to go into stock photos 49 which is on the computer that's not on external hard drive that's on the computer and i'm going to go export now when i export it it's going to export it to a JPEG format because Lightroom converts a raw file within its software. So the file settings, so I'm now going to take it from a, a CR2, which is the uh, Canon's raw file. And I'm going to take it from a CR2 and I'm going to convert it to a JPEG with the 100% quality. So all I'm going to do now is export that. So that's exported there. I'll go back to my where my files are. And if you look, you've got stock photos 49 and it's, it's there waiting. It's got a number, so you can rename it at this point. Just click on that. But if I double click that and it's in preview and I make it large, that is a nice image. Beautiful. No problem at all. So that is what I do when I'm processing my images. What I'll do is I'll take you through another one. Oh, that one there looks nice image. Right, so number eight down there, see number eight. I'm going to go back down to number five. Let it just render itself. Then it's got it's nice and sharp. And I'm going to go copy. And I'm going to press copy. On there so then I go to number eight and I think well that's a nice looking image and I go if you look down here I'm gonna go paste and that's it 
you see, if you look over here, all the settings have moved exactly where we moved them to before, apart from the crop. So then we press the crop. We said we could make this one bigger. And I made that one nice and big there. And we've done. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. I like that one. There's plenty of light on him. Let's see whether or not it would... If we can drop the exposure a little bit on this one. So I'll take the cursor over to the exposure. And you see, it diff see how it lights up by just hovering over it. And then just drop it down a tiny bit. Just need that bit. Just need that little bit. And that's all done. So now, right click. Export. That window comes up. And it's all there still. Stock photo 49. It's JPEG. It's at this size. And all I'm going to do is press export. And that's gone into that folder. So another thing what I do. And I'll do it now. When I first go get my pictures all lined up. When they've first gone in. And I look at that. I'll flick through them with my side button. So I can go up and down, I can go up and down with the with the arrows, I'll do the side arrow, and I'll often I'll look at a picture and think I'll go back, that one's a nice one, so I press P and I pick it. So this is when I'm first, very first looking at my pictures. And the whole idea is you pick them, here's another one, P. The whole idea is you pick them. And then you go back to them. And I'll show you how you go back to them. Now this was a hair. That was. Sort of laying down. He right, obviously didn't move. Let's go, his, go back a bit. His eye a little bit. Okay so we'll pick that one. Right. So all I've done now is. I've so you imagine you've got three, four hundred um, slides to go through. So you just P for pick and you pick them. Then what you do, if you see I'm down here, you go to filter and then you just, all you do is you just tap on that, you see that? You tap on that and it brings up the ones you've flagged. So what you do is you go to that one, right, we already know we like that one. We've already got it in the copy and paste, yeah, and we go there and bosh but it's too light so we brought the exposure down a little bit and what we need to do then is once you do that is go copy and copy and then that brings that exposure down for your next time you use it but don't forget we're now gonna we're gonna crop it and we're gonna get a decent size crop Do that one I'm done nice shot right click export export stock 49 jpeg there's the width export okay so on the next one i'm gonna go paste we've already dropped that exposure a little bit so now it's done it it's done all the thing there and we're gonna go and crop it and right click export we go stock 49 call it what you want of course jpeg and the size and export right so that will be let's see if we go now there's those images there. If I right click on that one and get the get info, because I'm on a Mac, it's a 4.3 megabytes. And if you look at the dimensions, when we do the export dialog box, and I said to you we'll set it at what the camera does, it goes to the nearest ones, but it still makes it big because you know the, in a camera it's more of a landscape. This is nearly square but it's got good dimensions. So we've cropped it, taken out, so really the crop that we did, 
wouldn't be those dimensions. It'd be half of those dimensions. But because we've put it in the export box and we put those dimensions in, it comes to the nearest ones to make them bigger. But the thing is, that's 4.3 megabyte, which will make a really nice print, a bigger large print. So you've got no problem at all with that. I've used Lightroom for many years. Um, they used to, you used to just buy the um, Lightroom for about £100. So I think I had Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5. And then what they did is they stopped uh, for a little while selling it, but a standalone product, and you had to rent it. £10 a month where you got Lightroom Classic and you also got Photoshop and there's now and again I need Photoshop and for the business I need Photoshop when I'm making a brochure with writing on and things like that so for a tenner a month I get the full package which I remember not so long ago with Photoshop if you wanted that it was between six and eight hundred pounds to buy that so now for a tenner a month I get that but you can now apparently buy Lightroom on its own for about around about hundred pounds and that will serve you so well it really will it's such an easy easy product to use and it's got a lot of things on it that um, I did for example I did uh, um, my first panoramic uh, the other week with Lightroom where you stitched about six photos together and it was so simple of course I just learned that on YouTube okay one last thing I want to show you. This is the last image that we worked on. And if I go for a different crop, let's say we go for a tighter crop, and we've done that. Now, if I go to export that same image, export, and then this dialog box comes up, and it gives you a choice. You can overwrite it, or you can use a unique name. Now, if you noticed on that um, image that it needed to be sharpened a little bit more, or it needed to be darkened or lighter, you did a little um, adjustment, then you would overwrite it, and then the one that you've saved uh, on the file would change to how you've just changed it. However, we've just cropped that and completely changed it, so what I want to do is make two images of this so i'm going to use unique name so as you do that we use unique name it means the original that we did is still going to be there so if we pop over to the folder that's the original one okay which as i said if you just change the lighting or something on it then you could have just done overwrite but we didn't we cropped it tighter and we made it you can see that number there it's got number two there that one hasn't got the two so that's got the two so that's got a unique name as you can see that one is a tighter crop well i hope you found that useful lightroom is a fantastic piece of software and once you get used to it you'll fly around it you'll really enjoy it it'll produce some fantastic images for you i know it's a lot to take in and there's a lot more that um, lightroom can do but i've shown you the basics that you're going to need to produce some fabulous images so please if you have liked it maybe hit the like button subscribe and leave a comment and i'll see you next time thank you